Welcome back everybody to Sean Palmer. This is the seventh level and the second to last in the game, Mount Hood Meadows. Mount Hood Meadows is a very unique level. It's fairly cinematic, especially with the three unique goals. You'll see what I mean when I get there. Of course, the goals are a little obtuse if you don't know what to do, but once you do them, you'll smile at how over the top the game gets. Our three unique goals here are to cut the power, bonk the water towers, and clear the road. These score goals have also increased in difficulty and you're going to be tested like never before. The level doesn't have as many opportunities to do tricks as in some of the other levels, but it masks that by being pretty fun throughout. So while the actual level itself is sort of between Kirkwood and Snowbird and the other levels, the fun had in Mount Hood is up there with Heavenly and the final level, which we'll get to next video. Of course, getting 800,000 points isn't super tough if you know what you're doing, especially if you can find some good gaps along the way. I'm a little ashamed it took me this long to figure out, but if you want to get out of a half pipe, just hold up when you're going up the side. You don't need a big ollie or super ollie like I said earlier, you just need to hold up. I'll be completing the goal cut the power, because you need to do that to get to the secret sponsor. The first thing you need to do is hand plant the billboard, then if you want to do it in run, one run, back up a bit, grind the wire up to grind the billboard, and then grind the cannon? Was that a cannon? Who puts a cannon on a ski resort? That's what I mean about this level being more cinematic. More things happen where there are cutscenes and the level geometry changes. Sort of like the snowplow knocking over the cranes last time in Squaw Valley. So anyway, those two power towers we knocked down look fairly grindable, so let's do that. And up here in an area we couldn't get to before is the secret sponsor. There's also a sort of hidden gap here, so let's do a big trick off of it and get ourselves some points. Like Snowbird, Mount Hood Meadows is divided into thirds. The first has good half pipes, good rails, and is sort of the more trick-based section. The second is foggy and has steep drop-offs, and in you're interacting with a lot of human things. And the third is sort of like the first, but less. While the bottom part doesn't have as much as the others, the level is just consistent fun throughout, and there's always something you can do. Taking the helicopter reset point at the end puts us in an area that I don't think we went through at all. This is sort of new, a reset point sending us somewhere in the level that we couldn't get to just by starting it up. But anyway, We've completed the score goals, and we've subbed in cutting the power for getting the logos, so this run is over. At 55 sponsors, we get a hidden board, the glass board. Every character can get that at 55. And at 58, we get two more stat points. This is the objectives goal, along with getting the logo since we didn't do that last time. The time limit has gone to 5 minutes and is actually pretty lenient. In the early videos I complained that the time limit wasn't long enough for us to get many of the goals. Well in the later stages that gets pretty lenient again and if you know what you're doing you can get down the level like 2.5 to 3 times per run and you can do most of the goals aside from the speed goal in one run. But anyway, dropping onto and grinding the helicopter makes it take off. While it doesn't look like it's done anything immediately, we will need to do that for a goal. And also it's an easy way to set up to get the first logo. In this run, I'll be setting up the goals on the way down and then completing some of them the second time through. So making the helicopter take off was to clear the road. But this is the first water tower we have to bonk for that challenge. 
Down here is the second part of clearing the road. You have to make the second bus disappear by grinding it. That one of three vehicles cleared indication may make you think you have to go back up and grind some of the other cars there, but you don't have to. In fact, you can do clear the road in one run down, because the last thing you need to do is down here. You may be able to hear the helicopter that we may take flight to come down here, but we won't be doing that just yet. The helicopter will perch itself right there, and we'll need to work with it later, but we'll do that the second run down, because right now we can grind the second, or bonk the second water tower and complete that challenge. With one challenge down, our second run through will be to get the rest of the logos and finish clearing the road. The game is a bit sneaky, hiding one of the logos in this hidden area. We still don't know where we are, so riding down to the bottom of this shows us that we were actually above the start of the level. It's a neat mechanic, but something the game only does once, along with the timer and checkpoints for the Palmer X run last run. Again, something the game only does once. Might have been better if they used it a couple times, and putting the logo there was a good way of keeping that area interesting. Up ahead is one of the logos, which we missed due to having to bonk the water tower over to the right, so we're just gonna get that now. I was reading reviews of this game again, making sure, you know, double checking that there was nothing that I was missing, that there was no race mode hidden somewhere in the menus that I was just not seeing. When I read something in the IGN review of this game, and the guy made a pretty good point. He said that unlike in the Tony Hawk or Matt Hoffman or Dave Mira games, where you have pretty much an open world to make your own tricking line in, the lines in this game are pretty laid out for you. Grind this branch, then bonk this helicopter, then grind that wire, then grind that cannon, because they're all in front of you, and if you jump to the side, you don't have anything to work with then. Sometimes the game counteracts that by giving you a gap if you're creative and on a rail and you jump to the left or the right to a different one than the one in front of you. But yes, I've noticed the rail clusters with three or four rails that lead right into each other instead of one rail that leads into three or four other ones. Especially when you're in a fallen tree section and there are seven or eight of them in a row. And also when you grind a tree and it puts you out right in front of one ramp. Yes, the game often says, this is a good line, you should take this line, but maybe it's a necessary evil due to the downhill format. Since you can't turn yourself around, and something really has to be in front of you if you want to keep the combo. You can't grind something to the side and then it'll turn you around, and then you'll go back up the level and interact with other things because gravity is not going to let you. It's going to make you go in this direction. So you can't do 500 things with one or two objects. You can only do a couple things. And one of those will probably be the better option. So should we just live with that and accept that maybe this game did its best to overcome that limitation? Or should we say, no, snowboarding should not try to have skateboarding imitation games. The games should be like the SSX series, where points come from doing the most you can on big jumps rather than doing the biggest combo through the whole level. Which I know is what the SSX series ended up becoming, but I'm talking about the first and SSX Tricky which were out at the same time as this game. Both games are under $10 by now, Sean Palmer's a bit cheaper, so if you want to, you buy them and you decide. Anyway, for the speed challenge, stay in the middle on the first part of the level, stay in the right on the second part, and at the bottom, stay in the middle again. And that'll be it for Mount Hood Meadows. 63 sponsors, we max out our stat points, we are 100% ready to go for the final level. 
Oh, why do I keep saying final level? It's Gotcha Glacier. Join me then for the last episode of Sean Palmer Pro Snowboarder.